Today, we are talking about light and sight, and you are going to be able to describe how an object can be seen. Let's do this, scientists. Hey there, scientists. I am Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom. Today, we are going to be talking about the light and the sight of a clouded leopard. And you are going to be able to describe how an object can be seen. Now, if you remember previously in our last lesson, we were talking about the senses that animals have. And we were able to easily relate those senses that animals have to the senses that we ourselves have. Now, we are specifically talking about a clouded leopard, just like we were talking about the last time that we were together. And as we learned last time in talking about an animal's senses and those clouded leopards, what we're asking and where we're starting today is, how does an animal's brain help it understand its surroundings? So how does an animal's brain help it to use its senses. And yes, you are exactly right. In animals' sense receptors, they receive that information and send the signals throughout the body of those senses to the brain. The brain processes that information and gives it meaning. So if we're talking about how an object can be seen today using light and sight, obviously the eyes and the light receptors in eyes and the brain are going to be huge elements that we have to pay attention to, be aware of, and think critically about. So let's look at our clouded leopard right here. And if we look at these beautiful eyes of this clouded leopard and we read the caption of our image, we know that the clouded leopards have good eyesight. Their forward facing eyes allow them to judge distances as they climb trees and hunt prey. So, the shape of their eyes allows them to look forward and it allows them to see far distances, which is super important when you are trying to hunt and find food and prey so you can have the energy that you need to survive. So where do you think in this clouded leopard, where do you think the sense receptors are located for a clouded leopard's eyes? Where do you think that they're located? And how do you think light is involved in sight? So where are we going to find those, those sense receptors in a clouded leopard? And how do you think light is involved in sight? You may be thinking that the sense receptors that help the cat see are in its eyes. And you might be thinking, well, if the object isn't lit up, then there's no way an animal could see it. So you need light to be able to see where you're going or where the animal is going. Well, let's Let's dig deeper here and see what else we can learn about this clouded leopard. So how does the clouded leopard see a ground squirrel? First, light reflects from or bounces off of the squirrel. The light travels through the air. When light enters the cat's eye, it hits light receptors at the back of the eyeball. Those receptors send signals to the brain. The brain processes the signals so the clouded leopard understands that it is seeing a ground squirrel. So if we look <clears throat> at our graphic here, at our diagram here, 
what happens is if we're going to trace the path of light from the sun to the leopard's eyes, the leopard's brain interprets signals from its eyes. Then the cat can pounce on its prey. So what we just read here is that the first thing that happens is light goes from the sun or any light source, but from the sun, it's going to hit the ground squirrel. Then what's actually going to happen is the light is going to bounce off of the ground squirrel and into the sense receptors in the eye of the clouded leopard. The brain of the clouded leopard is going to interpret what is happening with that bouncing light and make the connections inside that, hey, wait, this is a ground squirrel. I need to hunt this and I need to get this. <clears throat> so we know that how light is going to be is going to be a factor here is the light is bouncing off of an object to allow the clouded leopard in this case the ability to see the object. So what is the first thing that is needed for an animal such as a clouded leopard to see an object? Altogether, light. Yes, the first thing that an, any animal is going to need is light. So the light can bounce off of the object and then we can see what it is or the animal can see what it is. For an object to be seen, what happens after light reflects off of an object or a surface? So for an object to be seen, what happens after the light reflects or bounces off of an object or a surface? Well, once it bounces, the light is going to travel through air or space between the object and the animal and enters the animal's eyes. What is at the back of the clouded leopard's eyeballs? Well, that's where the sense receptors are, at the back of the eyeballs. You learned in a previous lesson about animal senses and that sense receptors respond to particular kinds of information. Light is the information that is detected by the animal's receptors for sight, which is why they're called light receptors. Now, we talked about this earlier. Anytime we have sense receptors, we know the brain is involved. So how is the brain involved in sight? Well, with this clouded leopard, the brain processes the signals from the light receptors and gives meaning to those signals so the animal knows what it's looking at. How does a clouded leopard's forward-facing eyes help it to hunt? The forward-facing eyes of that clouded leopard allow it to judge distances so that it can attack its prey with precision. How does the leopard see the ground squirrel? Well, again, we go back to our diagram. The light bounces off of the ground squirrel. And so the light comes from the sun, hits the ground squirrel, bounces off of the ground squirrel into the sense receptors in the eyeball of the clouded leopard. The brain processes that information and the clouded leopard knows that it is seeing a ground squirrel. All right. As you go forward today, you have been working to describe how an object can be seen. And we know that we need light first in order to see an object. And we need our sense receptors to process that information. Now, we know that there are other animals out there that use other ways to see, like sonar or echolocation or um, maybe there are some animals that like can see using body temperature or heat. There are other senses that other animals use in order to be able to see or sense what's around them. But in this particular case where we're talking about this clouded leopard and most mammals, they, we need that light in order to bounce off of that object so we can see. But there are other factors that we have to think about. Like this ground squirrel, right? 
it's not a hard surface. It's not like a mirror and light can easily bounce off of it. It has a different texture. It has a fur. The grass has a texture. Um, so how do the color and the texture of the surfaces of objects affect how they are seen? And how do these characteristics affect what animals see and perceive? Well, the texture makes a huge difference. Bright colors and surfaces that reflect more light are easier for certain animals to see. And this kind of leads back into camouflage, which you've talked about earlier in previous grades. Predators that hunt by sight can distinguish potential prey from surrounding objects more easily when the prey reflects more light. So the less camouflaged it is, the more that it bounces different light off of it, the easier it is for a predator to see it. As you move forward today, you are going to be creating a graphic just like the one we have here adding in the arrows so that you can describe how an object can be seen. And you have to think about this question. So what if there is no light? What if a clouded leopard is hunting at night? How would they be able to do that? How would a clouded leopard be able to hunt at night and still see what they need to see and their prey that they want to eat even if there is low light. All right, so we've been working today. You now have the information to be able to describe how an object can be seen. You know that a key vocabulary word is reflect or to bounce. You know that light comes from the sun or from a light source. Most cases, animals living outdoors, it's gonna come from the sun. It could come from the moon could come from stars. Um, so we have light that comes from a source. It bounces off of an object. That object then sends light to uh, light receptors in an animal. And then the brain processes all that information. You know those things. You can describe those things. You'll be working today to add in these arrows to make certain that you can recreate this type of a graphic so you understand the process. And you're going to be working to infer what happens if there is no light. If you need a refresher, go back and watch our previous video lesson where we talked about the different senses and how the brain is a factor there. As always, be a critical thinker, work hard, be amazing, and I will see you next time, scientists. Mike!